up so that the width of this image is the width that I'm going to create, make all these images total. And because if you remember, we cropped it out from this guide to this guide. And then when we did this image right here, we cropped it out from this guide to this guide. So basically everything, and then when we do this main content background, we're going to copy it from this guide to this guide and so on. So the whole content area, this whole div is going to just be this width right here. So now we just have to get that width. So in my header, I may have showed you this already, the dimension is 635 pixels. So we go back over here and set the width to 635 pixels. And now we'll set the margin left to auto and margin right also to auto. And just so that text doesn't sign, line up in the center, we'll add text align left. Okay? So let's go ahead and view this again. And you'll notice no significant difference, actually no difference with this header because it was already centered. And our links have aligned to the left. So let's go ahead and edit those and get them set up the way I like, I want them. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to add a UL with the ID of nav since I'm not adding anything to it. I'm just going to leave it blank. Then UL nav for the list items. We'll set the display to inline. And that way, right now they have the display equal to block. And you'll notice how they line up vertically. But when we set it to inline, we reload it, it sets it lines up horizontally. Okay? And then after that, we'll go ahead and edit our links. So UL nav list items A. So if you're wondering why I have these set up like that, it's because I have an owner list with the ID of nav. Inside of that owner list, I have a list few list items. And with the and inside of those list items, I have my navigation. It will, and so that's kind of easy. That's easiest for me. Doesn't matter how you do it. You don't have to copy me by any means. You can stick with this type of way the body and the page wrap works. I just like it like that. So for these links, I'm going to set their display to block. And the reason I do that is because a LA element or a link element cannot, you cannot change the width and height of it. So the only way you can change the width and height is by adding display block. But when doing that, you'll notice they line up vertically. Well, we don't want them to line up vertically. We want them to line up horizontally. So to get them to line up horizontally again, we'll add float left. Okay. And we'll go back over to here. No. Back into Safari and reload the page. Now they're lined up horizontally again. So now we have our links, but I, I'm going to want to add these background images to it. So I'm going to go ahead and set the height to all the links in the nav. So to get that height, I'm just going to get the info and my height 69 pixels. So back over here, we'll go ahead and set the height to 69 pixels. That way I don't have to set it up individually for all. I don't have to set each one of these, say, height, um, 69 pixels, height, for, or, um, you know, I think you understand what I mean. So let's go ahead and give the background image to home. So I'm going to create a new, another um, nav list item, and this list item, if it has the class of home, and it will have a width. Of, let's find out how wide our pix our image is. So, the width of this is 210 pixels. So, width 210 pixels. It's good. And the height? No, we already set the height. Like I said, now we don't have to set the height. And if you're wondering why I gave them all the same height, it's a good question because I set these guides up. All of them have the same height by default with these guides. So I didn't try to crop out and make sure I got the right height each time. I just got the same height for all of them. So we'll go back over to TextMate and set the background image to this to images home.jpg. And that's all I need to add right now. I'm just going to cut it, copy this and paste it two more times. And I'm going to set this one to downloads. Set the background image to downloads. 
and this one to contact and give this one the class of contact and we'll go ahead and find the width for the downloads link so it's 176 pixels so 176 and then for contact the width of this is 249 pixels so 249 pixels okay so now we just need to add these classes to the links so this one's class is equal to home and I'm just going to copy and paste that this one's downloads and I'm just going to copy and paste or select it contact back over to Safari if we reload this page we notice that we didn't quite get the background image and I'm going to look and see why we didn't get our background image I think it's something I did over here yes I didn't add that and URL silly me so I'm just going to copy this little piece right here and paste it right there and right there now we reload the page and you'll notice we have our three links they line up perfectly the uh, logo now lines up but we have home downloads and contact well an easy way to get rid of this without a whole lot of extra code is just to go right here and add text indent negative 999,000 pixels and when we do that the text will move to the left 999,000 pixels or otherwise off the screen and that way we have our three links they're all set up and bingo now we can go ahead and get our content to this add our content to this so back into Photoshop I'm going to add another guide just about right there and if you're wondering why I have to use my move tool to do that no I don't so uh, if you're wondering why I made that so tall, it's because you'll notice we have this textured background. And if I make it too short, you'll see the kind of like this repeating line going all the way down it. But if we make it tall enough, you won't even be able to tell that there's a difference right there. So I'm going to take my crop tool again. And I'm going to select these three lines like that. Double click on it. Choose File. Save for Web and Devices. And we'll save it as content bg dot jpg we'll save that we'll hit undo it save it again and now we'll go to our page wrap and we'll give this the background of images content bg dot jpg and we'll make it repeat vertically repeat y I don't need that so we'll go ahead and reload this page there's no difference well I'm just going to add some quick text so over in dashboard and variable length copy the clipboard come back and that's a widget that I got offline for free I got it off the Apple website to be exact and I'm just going to add that text and you'll notice that it repeated perfectly although if you can't see this online I actually have where the style re let's redo this the style automatically added that glow to it so you'll see you you can't see it but I can see this little repeating glow effect and I want to remove that I don't want that so an easy way to do that is to choose layer flatten image discard hidden layers yes and now redo that if our crop or I'm just going to, to recrop this. You'll notice it didn't add that. So now we'll save it for open devices again and just overwrite our content BG. That way the style doesn't repeat automatically. And we can undo that again. And now we'll reload the page. And you can't even tell that the page, you can just, it repeated perfectly. And